Hey, my name is Sneaky from Cloud9, and today I'll be analyzing SKT versus Generic Game 1 from the LCK. So, the Ergot is really interesting because he might be a super OP pick right now, uh, kind of undiscovered in the AD carry role. It's mainly been played mid, specifically by Keen, and then Bjergsen pulled it out too, but uh, I, I think it's really strong. I've tried it out a few times myself. It does an insane amount of damage and has a crazy amount of tankiness, so I think it works really well. So, seems like a really good pick there. Um, uh, the Anivia, I think it should be okay, especially since he's against Lissandra in the mid lane. Lissandra's not really a bully. The only issue would be dying at 6 because of Lissandra's ult, how much kill pressure it has. Besides that, SKT's bot lane is pretty aggressive. Corky can't really abuse anyone until later. And Urgot should be outskilling him in the mid game, which is pretty interesting because Corky usually does have a strong mid game. Past that, Sejuani versus Rek'Sai. I think Sejuani actually has a huge edge. Besides that, I don't about the Chundle versus uh, Hecarim. Chundle's always been a really good in the top lane. So, picks and bans are pretty interesting for this SKT junior game. The first pick I got is probably the most notable thing. The next one would be Anivia for mid lane. I think mid lane's in a really weird spot right now just because of how many random champs there are pulled out all the time. There's, a, there's like an insane amount of random picks, especially since Victor is disabled right now. I think that's like the main cause of all this. So I'll give the total edge in pick bans to SKT. So at about the 9 minute mark, uh, the early game is going pretty well for SKT. They have their tiers on Nivea and Urgot, which means they're not going to be strong, but they're going to be scaling up. They're relatively even. It's not like a 30 CS lead where they're going to have a huge item on you all the time. And then the Negatron for mid lane is also interesting. Going a defensive item first is weird. Normally you want some sort of CDR or mana regen item, so Morellos or Athenes first. SKT's early game is a lot weaker than Janair's because Alistar in general is pretty weak early game. Same as Sejuani. Sejuani doesn't really get anywhere until 6. And Nivea and Hecker, like their entire team is just wait till level 6-ish and then we'll be okay. How SKT had to run and Janair's warding. They actually had a ward near race, which was is unseen by the pink. The deep ward on the race showed that Anivia and Alistar were isolated from the group, knowing that SKT is super split up. They see Urgot bot lane in the Hecarim top lane, so they knew that they were four-man versus the three-man, and actually starts out as two-man. So 4v2, and it allowed Jenner to just go in and immediately initiate. So Jenner starts this fight off by initiating onto a Baron, uh, because they had vision, but... They were a little bit hesitant to start the actual Baron, which means that uh, SKT was able to respond by just running up immediately and uh, building the fight. Jinner had to run out immediately just because of Sejuani's initiate. Uh, if they're all stacked up in that pit, they get five minutes Sejuani ulted, you immediately lose the fight. After that, at Sejuani initiate, Corky, Annie, Rek'Sai get behind the wall, and then Navia walls off Lissandra Trundle, which means that Corky, Annie, Rek'Sai are actually unable to do anything, whereas the five-man team from SKT is just wailing on the Trundle and the Lissandra. That alone wins them the fight, but it was Janera's bad positioning in general that forced them into this bad situation. Indivia Wall carried this fight after the initiate. Uh, Alistar gets a good flash pull on Corky, pulls him in, and it's basically just clean up from there. There was nothing that Janera could do after putting themselves in such a bad spot because of how much CC that SKT can bring. So, in general, Janair's comp was not bad, but the way they lost this game was getting initiated on, being a little hesitant to do Baron and stuff. A lot of iffy decisions. Another big factor was also Corky's build path. He has two items at 35 minutes into the game, and if you look at everyone else in the game, they either have three or four. So, when you have QSS and Bilgewater, 35 minutes, they don't count as items. They're too weak and don't do anything like qss will save you from some stuff sometimes but if you're not doing any damage you're not really worth being saved i personally would have changed corky's build to fork second the qss he could get a third and still be doing damage uh, especially against some super tanky lineup of uh sejuani and it could get him chaos with a corky since he wanted qss so bad the dragons don't really matter that much they did lose four drags 
but dragons in general don't give strength in themselves enough strength to be super strong as a team. Thank you for watching this analysis of SKT versus Junair. I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure if you want to ask me any questions or anything, you can follow me at C9Sneaky, send me any tweets. I'll be sure to respond.